I'm Mark Matson. I'm Chief of the Laboratory of Neurosciences at the National Institute on Aging and also a professor at Johns Hopkins. I'm a neuroscientist who studies the brain in the context of aging and age-related neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's diseases. And we've become particularly interested in what kinds of manipulations or even diet and lifestyle changes can be uh, implemented in midlife uh, to prevent age-related neurodegenerative disorders, so essentially to increase the health span of the brain. And one manipulation we've uh, worked on in the last 15 years is intermittent fasting. It's been known for a long time that in laboratory animals, if you reduce their calorie intake, they live longer. They'll also live longer if you feed them intermittently. So for example, one model we use is alternate day fasting where every other day the rats or mice have no food and uh, we find that's really good for the brain. The reason it's good for the brain is that the brain becomes more active when the animal is fasting, the nerve cell circuits are more active, there's increased production of proteins that are called neurotrophic factors that promote the growth of neurons, strengthen synapses, the connection between neurons, and also very recently we found that intermittent fasting will increase the production of new neurons from stem cells in the brain. Um, we have animal models of Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, stroke, for example, and we find if we maintain those animals on this alternate day intermittent fasting diet, it will delay the onset of the symptoms, cognitive impairment in the Alzheimer's model, motor problems in the uh, Parkinson's model, for example. And we think what happens there is that the intermittent fasting is a mild stress on neurons, and so if neurons have been accustomed to being exposed to a mild challenge or mild stress, then they're more resistant to the stress that's imposed upon them, uh, for example, by the accumulation of amyloid in the brain in the Alzheimer's model or uh, accumulation of another protein called alpha-synuclein in Parkinson's disease, disease model. And so now we're extending the work in animals to human studies. We've done some pre preliminary studies uh, where we simply ask, can humans maintain a diet, for example, where every other day they only eat 500 calories or a little easier is a diet we've used where two days a week uh, we have the subjects eat only one moderate-sized meal. The other five days they eat normally. That's now called the 5-2 diet. Uh, we find that, uh, that the subjects can comply with these diets and in fact if they can uh, get through the first month, and, uh, you know, it's a big change initially from eating three meals a day to eating only one meal, but it turns out within a month or so they get used to it and, uh, and the subjects we've studied, they're overweight and this diet, make, they feel a lot better and many of them have been able to stick with it for long term. Now we have a study that will start soon where we're going to take uh, subjects at risk for cognitive impairment uh, because of their age and their metabolic status. Individuals between the ages of 55 and 70 who are obese and have what's called insulin resistance but are not yet diabetic. And it's, there's a lot of data suggesting those people, as they get older, their brain isn't going to work as well and they won't perform as well on tests of learning and memory. So we're going to test their learning and memory. We're going to look at neuronal network activity in their brains using a method called functional MRI. We're going to take a sample of cerebrospinal fluid, spinal tap, which gives us a window into the neurochemistry of the brain. We can measure things like neurotrophic factors, markers of oxidative stress and inflammation, which we find in the animals on these kinds of diet uh, are uh, affected and seem to play a role in the beneficial effects on the brain. Then we're going to put them for two months on the 5-2 intermittent fasting diet and repeat uh, the cognitive testing, uh, fMRI, and, and measuring these various uh, molecules of interest in their blood. Uh, and so long term, uh, 
we like to continue translating our animal work into human studies and then eventually uh, see if we can work with uh, uh, healthcare people in healthcare providers and so on to try to develop specific prescriptions and then using, for example, social media and so on, uh, try to get people to, particularly overweight people, to uh, get on these kinds of intermittent fasting diets for a month or two. And we think if they can do that, many of them will be able to stick with it long term and it will benefit their health.